So we're going to do a series of discussions on uh, weight and balance. And I'd like to start off with what I like to call the down and dirty method for weight and balance for the R44. And I'll use an R44 Raven 1 uh, for the example. And this, using this method, you can do a weight and balance in literally a matter of seconds. It's very quick to do. Uh, it's very, very accurate to do as well. And if you make things easy to do and they can be done relatively quickly, people will comply with them and actually do the weight and balance. All right? So when we're teaching students how to do a weight and balance, um, we have them open, chap open the POH to chapter six, end up using this form right here. We usually blow it up to a single sheet, make it bigger. But uh, so they have to plug in a bunch of numbers and the back of chapter six will give you the uh, basic empty weight of the aircraft. And they've actually figured the uh, longitudinal and lateral moments for you. So you first you write that down, the basic weight, the uh, longitudinal and lateral moments on here. And you enter in the weights of the pilot, weight of the passengers, uh, you put in how much fuel you have, and uh, then you get a calculator and you multiply the weights times the arms, both longitudinal and lateral, to get your total moments out here. Then you have to take a calculator and total up all of these numbers together. And then you total up both your lateral and longitudinal moments and total up your total weight here. Then you take and divide uh, moment divided by weight gives you the CG so then you figure uh, both your lateral and longitudinal CG and of course uh, you know all of the information for uh, weight balance should be in one chapter on the POH there right yeah uh -huh. yeah then you get to go to chapter 2 and open it up and go to what's called the envelope then you plot out your CG's both longitudinal up here and lateral down here uh, to see if it falls within the flight envelope right? So as you can probably figure it out, when people first start doing these, especially when they're students and they have to put all the numbers in, do all the calculations, do all the adding up and dividing and all that, that takes several minutes to do. So anytime you make something relatively complicated and lengthy, uh, yeah, human nature being what it is, people tend not to do it. All right? And you can get yourself in real trouble if you end up, you don't have a really good idea of what your weight and balance is on the aircraft that you're flying. All right. So I have a little down and dirty method that's used and works quite well, it's quick to do. The first thing that you need to know for sure, and this works works really well for, uh, and I'll use as an example an R44 Raven 1 that's uh, average uh, amount of equipment on it. The, you need to know what the thing weighs. So in the aircraft that you're flying, again, if you go to chapter six, you go to the last page on chapter six and open it up, it's gonna give you your basic empty weight, the longitudinal lateral moments have all been figured for. You really know what you need to know what your aircraft weighs. And uh, for this example, I'll, I'll use the Raven 1 here. It weighs 1,467.2 pounds, right? The maximum uh, growth weight for a Raven 1 is 2,400 pounds. So the empty weight of that particular helicopter is 1,467, right? If you take your Max gross and divide what the basic empty weight is, you'll find out that that's a difference of 933 pounds, right? So that's 933 pounds usable load. Usable load being all the people or stuff that we put in the helicopter and the fuel, all right? A Robinson R44, both Raven 1 and Raven 2, hold 46.5 gallons of usable fuel. They actually hold about, I think, 47.7. It's about 1.2, it's unusable. You just kind of roughly uh, increase that to 50. Fuel runs six pounds per gallon. So if the aircraft is full of fuel, so six times 50 is 300 pounds of fuel, right? <clears throat> if you have a usable load of 933 pounds and you're absolutely full of fuel, you've shaved off 300 pounds of your usable load, you're down to 633 pounds. Figuring that every, uh, I like to call fat Americans these days, everybody weighs about 200 pounds. Some people weigh a little more, some people weigh a little less. But if you just kind of ballpark it at 200 pounds per fat American, and you can have three people on board the aircraft with you, and full of fuel, and you're pretty much right at maybe you know slightly 30, 40 pounds below max gross weight, and that's acceptable, okay? How about if you had four fat Americans all weighing 200 pounds a piece? That's 800 pounds of people that are in the aircraft with you. Subtract 800 from your usable load of 933 and you've got 133 pounds that you can use for fuel. Divide that 133 by six and you come up with somewhere in the neighborhood of about oh, 22 gallons or so. Roughly 
just slightly less than half full of fuel. All right. So, in generalities, if you're taking three people with you, you got three, you know, the pilot and, and two fat American passengers, and you can go all the way to full of fuel, and you'll still be within max gross weight. All right. If you go to four passengers, pilot and three fat Americans on board the aircraft, you can go to just slightly under half full of fuel before you met max gross weight. All right. Okay. What's well, another thing to consider kind of quickly about this is where you put your passengers. And so let's say that instead of having four 200 pounders, you've got one guy that weighs uh, 299, the maximum allowable limit in a R44 is 300 pounds per seat. And that includes anything that's under the seat. You can have up to 50 pounds of something under the seat, but you have to figure that whatever's under the seat uh, into the total weight per seat. But let's say that you have a guy up front, he weighs 299 and you're you actually put him up front with you, and you've got another passenger that weighs 100 pounds, kid, or whatever, and they're in the back seat. Well, you'll figure out after you do, and you can, when you plot out all of your moments and all that, you'll find that your CG is actually too far forward, all right? In a Robinson helicopter, everything within the uh, cabin is actually forward of the mast, right? So the more stuff and the more weight you put in the cabin, and the farther it gets away from the mast, i.e. the front seat, the more effect it's going to have on the CG. So if you put a really heavy passenger in the front seat, it really has a tendency to shift the CG forward, okay? So the rule of thumb is put the fat guy or gal goes in the back seat, and the skinny little guy or gal goes up front. And if you want to prove that to yourself, you can figure your weight and balance uh, with your 299 pounder in, in the front seat next to you and a 100 pounder in the back seat and another 200 pounder in the back seat and uh, and then refigure it again. Now moving the 299 pounder into the back seat and put the 100 pounder in the front seat and you'll see your CG shifts pretty appreciably aft and you're within CG limits. Yeah.